Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, D546? Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. All right, so I wanted to talk about Daniel Zones this video. I didn't do it during the actual bye week, but I mean, we're, st we're still in the bye week kind of right now. So haven't gotten back to football yet. So let's just kind of do a half of a season analysis on Daniel Jones. You, you got to consider the past. You got to consider the rookie season. He looked great. He had a ton of fumbles, but you just think if he could, if he could secure the ball, he would be a lot better. We thought that he would go over 30 touchdowns the second year because, you know, why, why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? I mean, he, he had just gone over 20. He just got into 24 in 12 games. He didn't do that. Very disappointing year because of Jason Garrett's offense, but also because as an NFL quarterback, you got to do more. You got to be more productive. You got to have more than 12 touchdowns or 11 touchdowns. I don't know what, it, what he ended up the year with, uh, but you got to do better than that. This year, he's, he's more on the pace for just a regular kind of low touchdown season for a quarterback, which will be about maybe about 17 or 18 touchdowns, maybe 20, which isn't horrible. It's not horrible, but it's just it's just showing that he's just watching things go happen. He's, he's just watching things happen around. Him. And that's kind of not that's kind of what my point is about Daniel Jones. I'm not off of the train yet. I, I made videos this offseason saying he was going to take that next step. Has he taken that next step in some areas? Definitely. Uh, but it's definitely had a direct correlation with Andrew Thomas. Definitely had a direct correlation with him. As soon as Andrew Thomas went out, we saw a completely different quarterback. I understand he's out. Your your guy, your, your blindside protector is out. But you have got to perform at a certain level no matter what. you got to get rid of the rookie mistakes that he made a couple of last, last game we played. Or uh, he made one where he fumbled the ball. you got to hold on to the ball. He held on to the ball for entirely too long, and he didn't secure it and make sure that he didn't fumble the ball. These are the things that we have got to clean up. These are the things that we cannot have. Uh, and the team is, what, three and six right now? We could have won three more games. Even, you know, these things weren't even his fault. Darius Slayton dropped a pass in the Washington game. These games weren't his fault. But at the same time, you want your quarterback to be at the head of a winning team. You want him to consistently go out there and at least give us a shot to win. If he has the ball at the end of the game, you want to feel really good about it. And I just don't feel confident with him at the end of every game if he has the ball that he's just going to put us in the end zone. I don't. I mean, I'm more confident that he'll fumble on the last drive than I am that he'll score a touchdown. And again, this isn't me giving up on him at this point in the season. It's just what I'm seeing at this point. Now, I'm thinking this next half of the season, our schedule lightens up. There's a lot less pressure on him. Let's see if he can really start ramping it up. He's got way too many weapons out there. Offensive line, no offensive line. Sometimes he just doesn't pull the trigger. I see him on film. I see him, I see him watch people come open, get covered, then watch them come open again, and, and him still not pull the trigger. There's a lot of delay. There's a lot of hesitation. And we really have got to, I mean, you, you got to speed it up. Because Kenny Galladay, you got to give that dude one-on-one -on -one chances. You got to give him one-on-one -on -one chance. We brought him here for the red zone. We brought him here to take shots down the field. We talked about all offseason. Daniel Jones is so ranked. He's, he's ranked so highly throwing the ball down the field. Daniel Jones is this. But he doesn't throw the ball down the field. And I don't want to hear the, and this isn't me saying that Garrett is just this great offensive coordinator, but I don't want to hear the excuses that Jason Garrett doesn't let him throw the ball down the field. Because... There's been a ton of times where there's routes going 30, 40 yards down the field, and DJ just doesn't take that shot. He's so efficient going down the field because he does he takes those shots very wisely, which is a good thing, but at the same time, you have got to be able to take some risk. Like that throw to Evan Ingram, that's what I want to see to get it to Kenny Galladay. I want to see that kind of 50-50 ball where you just throw it up in the air and your guy, you know, you just hope your guy can come down with it. Because I don't mind if DJ throws 16, 17 interceptions, if he can put up, you know, 28, 30 touchdowns. But we cannot be in a situation where the quarterback doesn't take any chances and we're losing games and you end up in a situation where you have, what, 15, 16 touchdowns and 11 interceptions. Because 11 interceptions isn't a bad number for interceptions. 
but it's a bad number when you only have four more touchdowns than those interceptions. Uh, as far as the running for Daniel Jones this year, he's been he's been a good runner this year. He was our leading rusher until last game. But I'm starting to notice one thing about Daniel Jones as far as why we don't run the option. People say it worked so well last game. Why don't we doing it again? I'm starting to notice that Daniel Jones cannot accelerate fast at all. He, he is he's not much different than your average pocket quarterback as far as how quickly he can get out of the pocket. He is a guy that tries to get to the edge. Defensive ends run him down. Defensive tackles run him down. He's not fast in the short area. So you don't want this guy consistently running the ball because he cannot get himself out of the way. And he's a guy who thinks that he can just drop his shoulder at any moment and run anybody over. So the running, should he continue to run the ball? Yes, in spots. But should we be, you know, forced running the guy every game? No, because he's going to get himself hurt because he doesn't protect himself. And he's just not that good in the short area. He's not good at making people miss. He did have a nice spin a couple of couple of games ago. or That was last game. He did have a nice spin move, but pretty much he's not good in the short area. Um, Daniel Jones is, is I, think, I, I think I like the way they're using him in the run game now. The occasional draw play, those things work. Um, and then going back to, to to what I expect for the rest of the season, DJ is with with Andrew Thomas there for on his blind side. He looked really good. He was making every decision right. Uh, he was doing everything right. It looked flawless almost, but he was putting up like maybe like one touchdown a game or, or less than that. But it just looked so flawless in between the twenties. The biggest problem with Daniel Jones right now in his career. Is the red zone. It's the red zone. Now, Jason Garrett is also a bad play call in the red zone, but Daniel Jones also is not good in the red zone, and that's because of his process. Um, he, he's, he's slow sometimes. Routes come open in the red zone, and if you don't throw it on the money with anticipation, it's not going to work out. You have to make those decisions that much faster in the red zone. You have to make those decisions that much faster in the red zone, and DJ just simply doesn't do it consistently. And that way we miss out on opportunities. Sometimes he throws the ball on these out routes and on these third downs too, where we're like, why are we throwing it short of the sticks? Well, teams throw it short of the sticks all the time. How many times have we seen teams throw, this, throw the ball against, you know, short of the sticks against the Giants and get the first down? There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a problem when you hit the guy and he has nowhere to run because he's, he's forced to go out of bounds. That, that happens way too much for my taste. And I want to see Daniel Jones make these decisions faster in the red zone, know when to take off in the red zone, know when to, you know, to throw it away, and actually give guys shots. Again, I talked about this in my preview video. I talked about this earlier on in this video. But if you have Kyle Rudolph one-on-one, if you have Kenny Galladay one-on-one, if you have the six foot six or six seven Colin Johnson one-on-one, just throw the ball. Float the ball up there. I'm not sure if he's capable of making that throw. Because he does not throw many floaters. He, he just doesn't do it in his game. We'll float the ball up there. Let them go up with their huge frames, box someone out, and come down with the football. You have got to give people a chance because a ton of times he'll just throw it five yards over their head. Five yards over their head, and they just they just don't see the ball. They, they have no shot at it. So give them a chance. Take the chance in the red zone. We don't score in the red zone anyway. So there's no point. You know, we, we put up 19 points anyway. There's no point in worrying about, you know, possession. You've got to be able to capitalize because how many times do we get down there and end up kicking a field goal? So that's what I want to see him improve on. We have been a little bit better in the red zone the past couple of weeks. I think we've been like maybe like 50% the last couple of weeks. I might, I might be completely wrong, but I remember we have kind of had an uptick in the amount of the percentage that we score in the red zone. So if we can do better with that, with Daniel Jones, the touchdowns are going to shoot up because this offense moves the ball between the 20s at a very high level. So we just got to start scoring. Um, with Andrew Thomas back, I think Daniel Jones is going to have a nice second half of the season. I'm not expecting anything elite, not expecting anything out of this world, but I do think he'll continue to, to elevate. And, I, and by the way, as, as a disclaimer, I do think right now he's a basically just, just an average quarterback. Uh, but he does have the ability to become above average, and you can win in the NFL with an above average quarterback. So 
if Daniel Jones can continue to to, to improve and if he, if he can get better in the red zone and if the play calling can get better, I think at the end of the season, we'll start to feel really good about bolstering that offensive line in the offseason. Uh, I, I, I think we're really good with the weapons, but maybe getting the tight end in the fourth, fifth round or something like that. We'll start to feel really good about him going into the next season because we'll have even more of of a resume to say that he'll be this or he'll be that. So you guys let me know what you're thinking Daniel Jones halfway through the season. Big game, another primetime game. But By the way, he has not gotten one primetime victory. That's why nobody in the national media believes in him. But we'll see him in primetime again on Monday night. Let's see if we can come out with a win. Tough game. Uh, but if he can come out there and look like a fighter and take this all the way to the end, he's going to get a lot of points from me. So you guys let me know what you're thinking of him halfway through the season. Again, what do you, what are you expecting this next half? You made it this deep into the video. Come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily. And during the season, I'm going to be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So if you made it this deep, Go ahead and join the D6 squad.